Hello and welcome everyone to a new Heroes of Mana Magic 3 video where in this one I'll be presenting you with cool tricks and things that you didn't know about the game. Even if you are a pretty veteran player, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be something in here for you that you didn't know yet. So let's get right into these. The first trick that I want to teach you is a behavior of the AI. Whenever you go into any fight, it's not random on how many stacks there will be of the opponent. Whether there's gonna be 7 stacks of hobgoblins, or a single stack of hobgoblins, or anything in between. That is actually determined by your army compared to the opponent's army. The higher your army is compared to the thing that you're attacking, the less they will be split. So if we use a ludicrous amount of Archangels, then anything that we were to attack is gonna be in a single stack because we heavily overwhelm them. But for example, our Lunar right here that does not have a good army, but instead has one Pixie, when attacking Pikemen here, it, they're gonna be split into seven stacks because the army that I'm attacking is overwhelmingly bigger than the army that I'm attacking with. So using this trick, we can actually determine how many stacks there will be attacking Luna and like that we're able to take more fights. So whenever you watch Luna take the entire map with a single pixie, it's actually not by coincidence or not to flex, um, you know, you take a low amount of army on the Luna so the opponents end up splitting more so you have more effectiveness of your firewall. So yes. The, if you want the opponents to split less, then get more army, and if you want them to split more, then you should actually deduce, I mean, take less army into the fight. That is the first trick. The second trick that I will show you is um, basically an AI exploit, but a very popular one that you can use for many things. Um, AI units that end up being able to breath you have kind of a flaw with AI where if you position very specifically you can actually get them to hit a one stack thinking they will breath your big stack but they actually will not. So a simple army like this, this is basically just Shakti starting army, it's what we collected from just buying the hero and upgrading the Shaktis and buying them out for main. So this is your literal basic starting army. And with this on the level 1 shot, you can actually take a dragon cave immediately into the game without losing anything. Let me show you the positioning. Train can sometimes make this tricky, but most usually it's gonna be uh, pretty okay. Um, so what you wanna do is you just wanna protect your your, your Shakti stack immediately into the fight. You can uh, wait for them to arrive over to your side. There we go. Now that they're here, we should be taking retaliation with our Shakti Pal stack. So we are then able to set up the Fake position. We, I mean, so we can hit as well. So you want your Pal stack to be exactly behind the dragon in this position right here. And then you want the stack that is going to be baiting the attack from the dragon to be directly um, to the bottom or above the main stack so this would be this position right here or this one over here um either one will work if th they can actually breath it properly and the two hexes that they need to use to breath it would be um, the two ones uh, adjacent below not these two and not these two these two right here and if we were to do it above then it would be those two hexes but they don't really exist so we are gonna be using the bottom ones in this situation then we're gonna attack and stay there we can also poke with the other ones, uh, keep them local to set up the next fake breath. And as you can see, they attempted to breath my dragons through the hoppies, but they failed. Um, they're kind of stupid like that. So you're able uh, to abuse and exploit this to your advantage. Then we're going to be doing it again. This time we'll be setting it up close to north. We took the retaliation. We can set up the positioning. We can have some chip damage. And once again, they miraculously <laughs> fail to... Um, Breath your Shakti stack. And we can just take the last retail and we can kill them. That's exactly like how we'll hit that at the end there. I might have gotten hit once by one dragon, but compared to the kind of losses you would be having without using the Strig, um, it actually changes quite a bit. And this is something that you should be using for the sake of your black flowers, for the sake of your dragon dwellings. Um, you can actually do it against your breaks as well. I uh, can adapt this to many situations, but do you know that this can be messed up by the rain and also range creatures because they sometimes prioritize range creatures instead. So yeah, 
This is a very neat um, little skill that you're able to use on your dungeon and other factions gameplay. The next trick is also related to dungeon. And in this trick, we are able to preserve the mana vortex of a new week, okay? So let's say we are in a scenario where we want to be getting the army from the dungeon town over here for the new week, okay? So we'll be wanting to chain it to, let's say, Gion. We want to get the army out, but we don't really want to wait some Vortex because let's say our hero already has like a lot of mana and he doesn't really need to use it. So if you were to just buy a hero here or just chain the army properly as they usually do, we would end up wasting the new week's mana Vortex and that would be pretty bad. But there's a way to save it. So here's how you do it. First of all, you need a hero garrisoned inside the town before the week begins, okay? So, if we pass the turn now, it's gonna be um, actually 1 on 7. And then... Uh, now it's 1 on 7, so the next turn is gonna supply us with new army income that we'll be able to buy and uh, chain. And also, the Mana Vortex will be refreshed. So... If we pass this turn, I will show you how to execute this trick. So, if we were to just click on the, the castle by uh, from here, or from by just going in here, then we would actually waste the vortex uh, immediately. No chance. But if you were to access the castle by going into a different castle first, then clicking on the right side menu here on the castle, then we actually didn't waste the vortex. Now we are able to pick up our army, we are able to get the zero out, and then we're able to get the army where it needs to go. And the Vortex is actually still safe for anyone to use. Then we could get the new hero, Vortex that, um, and, you know, use the Vortex however we want. So, in this kind of way, you're able to chain the army while preserving the Vortex. Really cool. Do you know that the building a castle, I mean, any building in the, in the castle is also going to immediately trigger the Vortex, even if you access it in that kind of way. So you need to have a hero garrison, and you need to get it out immediately. And then we'll be good to go. The last trick that I want to show you is a pretty unique one, and one of my favorites, really. It is, um... Basically, the game giving you misinformation, or not giving you enough information. And if you know how to use it, you can actually do pretty cool thing to them. So, guess how it goes. If we were to use most of our movement points... Doesn't really matter how or where. Then, towards the end of the movements, let's say we wanted to go to um, this spot right here. So, what it would cost us would be one uh, move like this, and then another diagonal. So, that would be 100 plus 141. Currently, we don't have the moves in order to, in order to be able to ma manage that. So, however, we are actually still able to step there. The reason this is, is because the last movement is Sheet. I don't know how, I don't know why, but using 100 moves, you are able to step diag- I mean, um... Yeah, you're able to step diagonally, which can be used to take things that you otherwise would not be able to take, and it's actually a pretty good way to preserve a little bit of moves, get that little bit extra. If you know that the last one was cheat, you're gonna be good to go. And, you know, if I were to, um, you know, I went from here to here. And if I were to do the order differently, if I were to take the diagonal step first, I would actually not be able to make these two moves. So, having this knowledge, you're gonna be able to optimize better. We can show you another example, just by anyone. And then, we can just move around a little bit. Then... If we go here, we should not be able to step diagonally over here, but we actually are able to. Just because the last move is um, cheaper. This does not work on terrains that have penalty, even if you actually are not suffering the penalty at the time. So this will only work on grasslands, dirt, um, inferno terrain, and um, highlands. So yes. Last move is cheat. Keep in mind. Some different terrains actually have some different rules as well. For example, Fortress usually is second last move is cheat. Um, and that's also like kind of weird. But that is, uh, in my opinion, way harder to actually utilize. So, um, yeah, I don't really count it too much. 